says we are taking things slow it means you need to use a no kissing no sex no sleepovers for three months dating rule because uh, guys right you don't know if this is a man or a guy yet so guys will say I want to take things slow to not like in order to get what they want which is the sex but not have a relationship so uh, it's a situationship that you're in if you are kissing and having sex. If you don't want to be in a situationship, uh, then say absolutely, like yes, I do want us to get to know each other and to take things slow. And I'm using a no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers for three months dating rule to make sure we are getting to know each other. And if he's like, no, like taking things slow means sex and kissing, then say, definition of taking things slow means I'm not going to be committed to somebody who's not committed to me and I want to get to know somebody before jumping into a commitment because I'm looking for a long-term relationship. What does taking things slow mean to you? Like you're, you're saying kissing and sex but for how long before we are in a relationship and does that mean we are kissing and having sex and then we will get into a relationship? you know like like get him to define that and you take control of the definition for you don't let his definition define your life you get to control your life you get to control your outcomes you get to decide who you will and will not be committing yourself to and I'm telling you my love don't commit yourself to somebody who's not committing to you because while you're doing that here's here's a guy here's somebody over here saying commit to me i'm not committing to you because you know i'm taking things slow but commit to me because you know they want your exclusivity and here are the men over here going why can't i have access to her i'm i want a relationship i'm ready to start a family i'm ready to get married i'm ready to buy a house with somebody i just want to meet the right person but here you are in a situationship with somebody who's taking things slow because they're not ready. So don't tie yourself into somebody who says they wanna take things slow. Be available for the person who's ready for a relationship. You wanna take things slow, fantastic. But I just need you to understand, I'm not committing myself to somebody who's not committed to me. How would you handle a guy sending mixed signals, uh, deciding to friend zone you, but still sending mixed signals? Don't play with those people. Don't be occupied with those people. Don't be distracted by those people. No kissing, no sex, no sleepovers. I'm seeing other people. I'm not going to be committed to somebody who's not committed to me. Hello, I just need to say I love your advice and lives. Thank you. It has improved my relationship drastically. My love, thank you. I appreciate this so very much. Uh, just hopped on here. Great advice. Hello, everyone. Thank you, love. Guys will do anything but try and define that. Exactly. So don't commit yourself to guys. You are wasting your time when you do that. What if he asked for a break and I asked for uh, what written letters, but he hasn't sent anything in three months? You're not in a relationship, my love. Stop being attached to somebody who's not attached to you. Would it be weird to have the three month rule on your dating profile? I've never online dated, obviously. I wouldn't put it on there because you on your dating profile, it's this is who I am. You don't need to state these are my goals and my plan for achieving that. This is a conversation you have with somebody who's meeting you face to face because this is a more in-depth conversation about who you are and where you're going. On your dating profile, it's, it's a light, this is who I am. And I write dating profiles all the time. So yeah, if you want help with that, come get a coaching session. Um, but you keep it light and you add something that makes them smile. That's truthful about yourself. You give great advice. Thank you. Hello. I just, oh, I love you. Thank you, my love. How do you make a guy communicate his feelings with you? You can't. 
um, you can't you can't make men do anything, right? Because they still they still got the pouty little boy inside of them. Uh, you know, we all do, right? Like, but boys especially uh don't tell me what to do right that still happens with them it doesn't matter how old they are don't tell me what to do so if you try to make them do something uh -uh, you, you you really get the the pushback on that so what you need to do to get them to talk more about their feelings is create an environment that is emotionally safe in other words a space where dialogue is safe and that only happens when the brain relaxes the brain relaxes through consistency how do you create consistency Every single day when my husband comes home, he hears, hi, baby, and then I go meet him at the door and I give him a big kiss. On his way home, every single day, he's anticipating, hi, baby, and a great big kiss because it never fails. I always do that. So um, he feels safe coming home because he doesn't have to wonder what's going to happen when he walks through the door. Every single day, no matter what, even if I feel poopy towards him, I make his breakfast, I make his coffee, I make his lunch, I make his supper, and I deliver it, and I give him a kiss. So there's consistency in my behavior. I also monitor my own behavior. Um, I take responsibility for my emotions and my behavior, and all of this is consistent. So this creates emotional security in the home because home feels like a safe place. When men feel emotionally safe, they do talk more. They are more affectionate. They do want to spend more time with you. So if you want to know how to do that, uh, grab fix that shit. This is 50 chapters on how to create emotional security within yourself, in your home, in your partner, between the two of you, so that all this goodness starts happening. Uh, my boyfriend won't meet my standards now I'm moving away and I don't think it's going to last. So break up my love. Like there's, there's two things here that are signaling that you shouldn't be in this relationship. Uh, you're not happy with who he is and now you're moving far away. You think you're going to be any happier with who he is? If, uh, if you guys are having a long distance relationship, you can't even make it work when you're close together. Hello. What do you do if a guy broke up with you twice then came back? Um, you define your next relationship and don't take him back just because he came back asking for it. So get no more assholes, get fix that shit. This combination here is gonna help you make sure you're with the right partner and doing the right things. Tips on controlling boyfriend. I'm worried he's gonna flip out on me when I move for school. Dump the motherfucker, what the hell? Why are you with somebody who is holding you back, who's creating emotional guilt? Um, this is not the right relationship for you. You call him controlling and you're worried about advancing in your life. He has to go. You are with the wrong person. Where do you get your jewelry from? It's beautiful. What kind of crystals are they? Um, <clears throat> so this is amethyst. Uh, we got some really nice amethyst going on on here. Um, this is Jeroy. <laughs> I don't know how it's pronounced, but Jeroy's. How to properly stay single and work on self. Uh, grab no more assholes, my love. There are uh, a lot of tips in here on how to elevate your confidence and self-esteem um, and calm your mind and emotions. Sorry, guys. There we go. Is that better? Tis for a successful marriage. We've been together 11 years. Things have been rocky lately. Coaching, coaching, coaching and or fix that shit at the very least fix that shit i highly advise coaching uh unfortunately way too many couples what is going on here way too many couples come to me when somebody is done and um somebody's desperately trying to keep the marriage alive and somebody is done when somebody is done it's like trying to resuscitate the dead and I mean somebody who's been brought to the morgue and put in the freezer already, trying to resuscitate that body. You gotta, you gotta get, you have to catch this, you have to save it, you have to change it before one person has died in this relationship. So if you guys have been rocky lately, come get coaching, at least one person come get coaching. My husband has never read Fix That Shit. It takes one person to turn a relationship around. Um, but you, you, if you're still plugged into each other, come get coaching. At the very least, get fixed that shit. 
My husband and I have been married for six years. How can we repair mistrust and other issues related? This is a deep, deep thing. This, this is a deep dive. Um, I would highly suggest coaching again. At the very least, fix that shit. What do you do if you have a date with a friend? He isn't in, into the three month rule, but he's a good person. You already know who he is. The three month no kissing rule is I don't know you. I just met you. I have no clue who you are. I have no background on you. I don't know any of your friends. I don't know anything about your life. I don't know if you're an honest person. I don't know if you have integrity. I don't know if you have a wife and kids, right? So if you don't know them at all, you should know them at least three months before you choose them for a long-term committed relationship. There's two choices when we are out there selecting people. Either you're selecting a hookup of friends with benefits, fun, fun, whatever, or you're selecting somebody to start a relationship with. This, who cares about kissing? Like it's, it's, when you figure out you're attracted to them and you trust them, go for it. This long-term relationship, get to know them first. It just makes sense. I've asked my boyfriend not to yell when we have a disagreement and he continues to yell. Should I leave? 100%. 100%. You set a standard. I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who raises their voice at me. If you choose to continue this behavior, I will leave this relationship because I will not be in a relationship with somebody who raises their voice at me. Hello, my loves. Um, those of you who are uh, here, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, yeah, I do. What if he doesn't meet the 10 out of 12 but wants to work for it? Um, so, yeah, like you could say, you know, look, I. I, I want to be, if you want to be with a 12, by the way, like if the two that are missing are vital to you, you can say, sure, like no kissing, no sex while you're working on this. I do, look at you, I already got one. Hello, my loves, look at all my I do's, so many I do's. Uh, so those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here once or twice, you're going to get a pop-up, In the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell, when you do that, say, I just did. I set boundaries and now he doesn't want to be with me. I ask for therapy and he refuses to see anything wrong with his behaviors. Goodbye. Goodbye. There's so many other people out there. Goodbye. You know, I set boundaries. He doesn't want to be with me. Goodbye. Don't diminish yourself to be with somebody who wants you to be diminished. I just did. Oh, I just bought two of your books. Thank you, my love. I love you. Thank you. Do I have some readers in here? How did you become a coach? I'm trying, but not sure. Do you enjoy this? I enjoy this very much. This isn't something I came to. This is something that came to me. People have been coming to me for over 20 years to get this kind of advice. Um, and basically what I did is uh, I, did, I did like some extra studying into sociology, psychology, anthropology, biology, like really got intense with my studies. I've been studying this stuff for a really long time out of curiosity, but I really got very intent in my studies and branded, created a platform, presented myself and my knowledge and said, if you want it, come and get it. And then I gave it away, gave it away, gave it away, gave it away, gave it away. I'm, I'm giving it away right now. Like I give it away like crazy because my goal is to change a lot of people, a lot of people, um, because there's a lot that needs to change. Oh, who's here? Who's here? Relationship, I'm happy listening to your advice. I bought Fix That Shit and I'm still reading through it. Make some positive progress in my relationship. Hold on guys, somebody's here.
guess what this is? Le Chateau. I just got a massive clothing delivery. I love this. I bought Fix That Shit. I'm still reading through it. Made some positive progress in my relationship. And I'm happily, I'm happy listening to your advice. I love you. Thank you. I don't want to give up on him, but I can't see myself with an alcoholic for the rest of my life. You are not giving up on him. You are not giving up on him. It was never your job to be his therapist. It was never your job to be his fixer. We can come into relationships damaged and fix ourselves, but we cannot come into a relationship damaged and say, fix me. That's not okay. That's not fair. You're not giving up on him. You're giving up on the insane notion that you should be responsible for fixing another human being instead of them being responsible for fixing themselves. So you're not giving up on him. You're setting a standard. I will not be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't manage their mental health. I will not be in a relationship with somebody who is not healthy. I will not be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't address themselves and deal with themselves and take responsibility with themselves. You are an adult, you are responsible for yourself. He is an adult, he is responsible for himself. You're not giving up on him. You are taking responsibility for what you should be taking responsibility for. That is your well being in your environment. And if he chooses, to have a negative impact on your well-being and your environment, you are right to leave. Thanks, Chantal is good at knowledge acquisition, knowledge retention, and specialization of knowledge. I love you guys. What kind of dogs? Uh, Maggie's a standard poodle and Charlie is a Westie Poo. And you're amazing. Perseverance, cognitive organization skills, presenting skills, emotional attunement, listening skills, adaptability, give and take. Yes. Struggling with finding my purpose. What book should I get? I write custom made. Custom made, my love. Custom made is exactly what you need to find your purpose. I'm going to teach you how to dive into yourself and discover what your purpose is. And I'm going to teach you how to monetize it so you start getting paid doing what you love. It's, it's amazing waking up every day and working, but it just feels like pleasure. Tips for a long-term, long-distance committed relationship in your late 20s. I have a free guide for you in the link tree in my bio. Go ahead and download that. I love you. Thank you for your commitment to public service. You deserve great credit for what you're doing. Thank you, my love. Integrity, strength, bold, courageous, lovely. Lovely. Do you guys want me to do a clothing review? Thank you, helps me a lot, really appreciate you. I appreciate you too, my love. Uh, tis for getting broken up with out of the blue. I got two books for you. If your heart is hurting, God come back queen. At the very least, get no more assholes and get out there and go get your next boyfriend. Don't sit around and pine and be sad like, oh, he broke up with me, what am I gonna do? Uh, 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 uh. He broke up with me, here's an opportunity for me to level up and do better and get somebody better. Yes, I was in a toxic relationship. Yes, uh, wanting to help others doing. Yes. Uh, hey, Chantal, I saw my boyfriend was looking up an old ex on social media when I was out of town. Thoughts? It could simply be curiosity. Uh, if all he did was go see what's happening in their life lately, that really could simply be curiosity. If he didn't reach out or, or touch base or like a picture or anything like that, it was just covertly, you know, like I'll do that from time to time, guys. You know, I'm, I'm curious what my exes are up to, who's had kids, uh, who's in a relationship now, right? Um, are they successful or not? So I will do that from time to time because I'm curious. Um, I don't reach out to them. I don't, they have no idea that I do that. Um, 
funny thing is I've changed names since we've been together so they probably have no idea how they could you know see me unless somehow I came across their algorithm somewhere um, but if it's just looking it's just curiosity Oh, he also reached out to her when we broke up. Oh, see, now that gets more shady. Now that gets more shady. I'm just going to go ahead and buy all your books. You're amazing. You're super sweet. Super sweet. I just purchased the book. Good, my love. Good, good, good. I need that. I'm 27 years old and I feel I need to be doing something bigger. Yes, I love that. Come into you, my love. Should I stay with the who doesn't know what to do for work and isn't financially stable? No, absolutely not. Uh, I really struggle with dating anxiety and confidence. What would you recommend? Uh, no more assholes. Knowledge is power and power is calming when you can knowledgeably go out into the dating world and go i know what i need and i know what not to settle for i know how to use a no kissing for three months dating rule i know how to calm my emotions i know how to increase my confidence i know how to elevate my self-esteem no more assholes is going to help you with all that licky dogs hello good morning would you recommend come back clean for healing childhood heartbreak from childhood trauma uh it's not written for that it's it's not it's not written for that my love unfortunately uh i i could help you with that though in coaching sessions in case that's something you were interested in do you have ebooks yes all of my books are paperback or ebooks i have one audiobook and that's uh fix that shit that you will find in the link to my bio but you can get all my ebooks, uh, all my books in ebook or paper, ebook or paperback, on Amazon. I am not a doctor; I'm a coach. What would you say is the perfect age for marriage when you are ready? After thirty-five years of marriage, how do you spice it up if it's getting old? Make out every single day, minimum two kisses a day, minimum five seconds each is what you need to be doing every single day. You're live, big fan, great advice, wise woman, thank you. Thank you, my love. Hello, love, so glad I discovered you on TikTok. Yes, do clothing haul, exciting. <laughs> How do you know when you're ready for marriage? Um, you, you, you know that you're with someone amazing and you're happy and you're building a life together and you're compatible and you make each other laugh more than anybody else. But what if I'm also not financially stable? So can I still expect it from him? Nope. Uh, it's not fair to ask for anything you're not willing to do for his clothing haul. All right, guys. So check it out. <laughs> you see the size of that? Woo! What do we got? What? Well, it's noon. Okay. This is so cute. I'll, so Le Chateau, they're done. They're not selling any more clothes online, but I, I bought everything, everything that I like. Um, because it was like 50, 60, 70, 80% off, like off. And then additionally, they would have these flash sales where if you bought like at least five items, you get like another, sometimes it was 50%, sometimes it was 40%, sometimes it was 30% off. So yeah, mama bought a lot of clothes. Oh, so check this out. Look at this. Look at this. That's a dress. And it's shiny. Oh, I like that. I like that. Uh, it's very beautiful. It's hard. It's hard. I, I might have to... Uh, advice on a man who's always working. He is ambitious. He's hardworking um support him right love him support him and make the minutes count my husband works 80 to 100 hours a week um i make the minutes count we see each other for minutes a day and in those minutes we hold each other we kiss um we we just have all these sweet tender moments right um 
So make the minutes count, support his ambition, support the fact that he works hard. Don't try to pull him away from that. This is him feeling fulfilled. This is him feeling like a functional human being. This is him feeling like he's making the best of his time. When he gets older and slows down, you will get more time with him. But don't try to pull him back from his ambition. That's not fair. If you're not okay being in a relationship with an ambitious, hardworking man, then don't be in this relationship. Don't stay in this relationship and have fight after fight after fight with somebody who is doing good things, being hardworking, being ambitious. They will share what they create with you if you are loving and supportive. <laughs> uh, how have your own experiences been with the three month rule? So, uh, with my husband, um, I, you are great. Honestly, I love your content. Thank you. Uh, so with my husband, I, you know, I was married when we met. So, uh, we got to know each other without kissing because, uh, you know, it is what it is, right? Um, so I accidentally did it. So I, I got to know what it's like to build knowledge about somebody and how that knowledge can turn into appreciation of who they are. So, and then, and then you fall for them. You become more and more attracted to them because of who they are. So I got to have that experience. Then I got with my, like I divorced my first husband. I got with my second husband, but we fought a lot. So we broke up a few times. And the first time we broke up, I got that book, Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man by Steve Harvey. He talks about no sex for three months. But as a social scientist, I went, yeah, but it's not sex that bonds me. It's if I kiss somebody, I'm not going to kiss anybody else. So what is it about the kiss that bonds me to somebody, even if it's very early, like a first, second, third date, right? So then I did some research into the kiss chemical and I went, you know what? It's the kiss that's dangerous, not the sex. So I said, I'm going to use a no kissing for three months dating rule. So we, we were broken up. I met somebody. I started dating them. I told them on their first date, I'm using a no kissing for three months dating rule. He said, no problem. We continued to see each other. And then my husband won me back before this person made it to three months. So I got back into the relationship with my husband. We fought some more. We broke up again. Again, I met somebody. I, I told him straight off, I'm using a no kissing for three months dating rule. He said, no problem. We started seeing each other. And then again, my husband won me back before I kissed that person. Those two people, there was no reason not to kiss them. They were men, not guys. Um, but because I used this rule, I learned what it is to use this rule. I learned what it is to be with the right person. Um, I wouldn't be with my husband today. If, if I was not using a no kissing rule, I would have kissed the first one because there's no reason not to. Um, so I am who I'm with today because I've used this rule and I am in the right place with the right person. We share ambition. We share affection. We share humor. Uh, we just, we, we're, we're just so good together. Um, you know, we got the static out of our relationship. Now it's just pure love. So every single day, it's like make up sessions and, and love and cuddles and love is a verb towards each other. We take really good care of each other. Um, so the no kissing for three months dating rule I've used several times and it has worked in my favor. It's helped me make sure I'm in the right relationship. Do you do video coaching with couples? Yes, absolutely. Anybody who wants to get a coaching session, go to my bio, click on the link tree, click that coaching button. It takes you to a page. Make sure you follow the instructions. There's three steps to booking yourself in for a session. Make sure you follow all three steps and you can book yourself in. I make it really easy. Uh, me and my boyfriend have been reading Fix That Shit to help our relationship. I feel like nothing changed. He still struggles to communicate. And I fell as I feel as if the last couple months have been me doing everything. So you might be with a selfish short term thinker, my love. Um, you can come get an assessment. Um, maybe I can fine tune your approach. Uh, you know, there's that I can do an assessment. I can help you figure out if you're with a selfish short term thinker. Maybe this isn't the right relationship for you. Or maybe this is a good partner, but we just need to fine tune how you're doing the work in Fix That Shit in order to create more emotional security in the relationship. 
Uh, fix that shit mentions to show emotions, but what if your partner gives cold shoulder if you do? So here's the thing, don't show emotions just because you're trying to manipulate a outcome from them. Be you, it's okay to be you. That's what I'm saying. It's okay to have your feelings. And if they, if they say, like, he's giving a cold shoulder, he's not being reactive to your feelings, that's fine, that's okay. If he was saying, you're not allowed to feel that way, that's where you say, I'm allowed to have my feelings, but don't show your feelings as a manipulation. When you say, I show my feelings, but he gives a cold shoulder, it means you're doing that with an expectation he's gonna react in some sort of way. You need to detach your emotional roller coaster from his ride. You need to detach from the outcome and focus on yourself, and if, as a result of doing this and becoming functional, you outgrow them, then you leave this relationship if they don't grow with you because you might be with a selfish short-term thinker. Gotta go, hope to catch a different live another day. Yes, love. What's the hardest thing you've ever been through? Breaking up with my mom. Breaking up with my mom. Uh, that hit really hard. Um, I just tried for so long. like. For years, years, years before I broke up with my mom, my dad was saying stop talking to her. My husband was saying stop talking to her because she was having such a, a horrible effect on me. And, uh, you know, I finally did when she, a, a few times, you know, all caps said, fuck you, you're dead to me. Um, so the the last time she did that, I just said, you know what, you got it, you got it. Um, so I'm not talking to her anymore because I'm just not willing to let her affect me anymore. Obviously, I still have some sort of effect about her um, because, uh, you know, it's just hard. It just gets easier and easier over time, but I don't think it'll ever be easy. How can my boyfriend and I become closer and more connected after we've been together for a long time? Make sure you get two kisses in a day. Uh, minimum two kisses a day for minimum five seconds each. My boyfriend talks and sees his girlfriends more than me and they just met a month ago. I'm resentful. So if he's seeing another girl more than you, that's his girlfriend you are in a relationship with somebody who's in a relationship with someone else you need to dump him you're a great honestly i love your content thank you do i have the right to be mad if my girlfriend talks to his girlfriends every day and sees them more than me uh no actually you don't have a right to be mad you need to leave the relationship uh don't stay in a bad situation and be angry that you are staying in a bad situation. I broke up with my best friend in 23 years and it hurts. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Pain never goes away. You just make room for it. <laughs> I've been single for over a decade. Am I just broken? I don't think so, but if you want to come get a coaching session, we can talk about fine-tuning your dating approach. If your boyfriend has issues with physical touch and won't kiss because boundaries, is that normal? It's not. And, and what's not okay is you staying in a relationship where you are physically rejected. If you want to be in a relationship with somebody who is affectionate with you and kisses you, leave this relationship and get into one that is more compatible for you. Is it normal for him to not want you to meet his parents because of trauma from his ex? No. And it's, 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 um, so here's the thing, my love. That broken, that wounded bird that you picked up on the sidewalk needs to be put back down. You did not come into a relationship to be a therapist. You did not come into a relationship to be rejected. Leave this relationship and get into a relationship with somebody healthier who is dealing with their shit instead of getting into a relationship with somebody and going, here's all my shit, deal with it. Not fair, not okay. It's not okay to get into a relationship and be a shit partner. That's not okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be in a relationship with you, but you can't meet my parents. Yeah, I'm gonna be in a relationship with you, but I'm going to physically reject you because of the issues I'm not fixing. Not okay. 
Not okay, my love. You deserve better. Ooh, somebody got vicious here. Snap the wounded bird's neck and move on to the next bird. Don't kill the wounded bird. Just put it back on the sidewalk. Uh, in your book, sex men, my book says men open up emotionally. If we do, my husband says that's not true for him. Uh, so here's the thing. It's men open up emotionally if you create emotional safety. In other words, a safe space for dialogue. An environment where their brain relaxes instead of getting stressed because they don't know what's going to happen one day or the next. If a lack of intimacy was one reason for taking a break, what do you recommend during three month fixing? A uh, lack of intimacy was one reason for taking a break. So during the three month fixing, I, I, I just don't recommend that you stay in limbo. I recommend that you be open and you use no more assholes and you you look for your next partner. Don't don't stay in limbo. Go. I'm holding the space for you to fix your shit so that we can be good. You know, like you guys are on a break. It means you're broken up. It means you're not together. So define your next relationship and tell yourself this is who I'm going to accept as a partner. I don't care what body it comes in. If you want to be the person who fits this then you can be the person by my side. But I'm not waiting for you to become this person. I'm waiting for this person, whoever that is. How do you deal with a petty partner? That sounds like a coaching session, love. Because I don't know what they're doing that's petty. I stopped talking to guys and focusing on school. Is that a good thing? Sure, absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. How does an ex fight for you again, like how your husband did for you? So, I mean, here's the thing, like my my husband is a, a man, right? So he, he doesn't get like, I was his third ever. He wasn't playing the field ever. Um, when he was looking for someone, it was always for someone to settle down with. So, uh, you know, when he came across me and he was like, ooh, Mm, something about her and then fell more and more and more in love with me and so the reason why you know he fought for me like he did is because of the level of love and devotion he had for me so if your ex is not deeply in love and deeply devoted to you he's not going to fight for you like my husband did My boyfriend apologizes after he makes me mad and I can't accept the apology because I'm too mad. What do I do? So, um, you know, get fixed that shit. Learn to control, manage your emotions. My boyfriend doesn't tell me all his problems. He says because he doesn't want me to worry. Is this true? 100%. Men are very much like this. Um, so men have something that I call the put the head down and get her done. So they don't tell you about their problems because they're working through them in their mind. They're not vomiting like men. Men are not vomiting all the time everywhere. When something comes up with them, they go into the man cave in their head and they work on it in there. And what they hope is that there will be a resolution or the problem will go away without them needing to talk to, to you about it. They don't want to talk to you about something that they're working through because they figure they'll come to a solution at some point somehow. They don't need to involve you and they don't want you to worry about them. Like my husband is loath to tell me about like aches and pains on his body because he doesn't want me to mother him. He doesn't want me to worry about him. So he often doesn't tell me about things or he'll have a bad day. And I'll, I can tell, I'll say, baby, how's your day going? He goes, right? Um, or he'll use like a one word or a two word answer. And I'll say, oh, baby, what happened? He goes, it's irrelevant, right? And he, he just doesn't want to vomit that. He knows he's going to get over it. He knows, you know, the next day is going to be different. Um, and so he just doesn't, he's just not like men are just like that. They're just very stoic. And it's okay to let them be like that. Um, but it's also okay to take care of them and be supportive and be uh, caring and do those things that make the home extra comfy. 
make their lives extra comfy, make, you know, relax their brain. That consistency of behavior that I talk about relaxes their brain, create that safe space in the home so that whatever else is going on in the world at home with you is the safest place. How do you start being okay with vulnerable uh with being being vulnerable with a man i've never had a boyfriend asking for a friend um so you just got to start by choosing the right partner for one thing a generous long-term thinker not a selfish short-term thinker so um make sure you're choosing the right person because if you choose the wrong person then everything you do just really hurts so make sure you use no more assholes you choose yourself a generous long-term thinker not a selfish short-term thinker um, and, and be yourself. How do you talk to a guy of interest that talks, but also says he's always busy? Don't be, so, don't be super focused on just one person. Don't be hyper focused on just one person. You should be like no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers for three months. I'm seeing multiple people at the same time. So you know what, if you're too busy, that's fine. I'm not disappointed in you because I'm not, relying on you to become my next partner. I'm not hoping you're going to be my next partner. I am objectively accepting, you know, getting to know different people simultaneously so that ultimately I choose the best one, the one who shows up, the one who is consistent, the one who is available. My partner and I have been together for nearly a year. Is it strange that I have not met his kids? Absolutely. Um, guys, when you're looking to choose a committed long-term relationship, your standards should be, I'm not going to kiss anybody who doesn't include me in his life. When I'm talking to people who have kids and they say, when should my kids meet this person that I'm, I'm seeing? I say, before you kiss, before you kiss, don't, don't add a member of your family and then introduce this new member of your family to your kids. Hey kids, I chose somebody for our family deal with my choice make your family part of the vetting process when you are meeting people if they say they have kids amazing uh, don't kiss until you've met their kids don't kiss until you've met their inner circle their friends don't kiss somebody who doesn't include you in his life don't kiss unless you've been to their place right don't kiss if you are not included in their life if they say i'm not ready to have you meet these people then motherfucker you're not ready for this. You're not ready for this because I'm not going to be attached to somebody who's not ready for me. If you don't think you know me well enough to include me in your life, then you obviously don't know me well enough to have access to my lips and body and take me off the dating field because I'm not attaching to somebody who's not attaching to me. I'm not committing to somebody who's not committing to me. I'm not including somebody in my life who's not including me in their life. I'm not fooling myself and telling myself we're building a life together if I haven't even met your people. So it is not okay. I suggest you set a standard. I need to be included in your life and if you're not going to do it, I'm out of here. Stop being a secret. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. Do I read Comeback Queen or Custom Made First? If your heart is hurting, Comeback Queen first. I've been with my man for three years. How can I communicate with him when he turns it on me? I don't know what turns it on me is. My husband was emotionally involved with a coworker and would get mad at me for calling him out. Sounds like you need to let him go. What's your story on how you became this amazing coach and author? Uh, so first I made all the mistakes, right? So I had an abusive mom. So, hey, I picked myself an abusive boyfriend for three years. Um, and then I was, you know, mildly abusive in my next relationship. Uh, pretty crazy. Um, I, I put my fist through a window. That was interesting. Um, and then I picked the cheaters, um, and then, uh, you know, and then I picked my husband, 
Um, like my, my first husband was a, a generous long-term thinker. My first husband was a man. My second husband was a man. But in my first relationship, I sacrificed intimacy for safety. In this relationship, I have sacrificed nothing. I literally have everything that I want. Um, I've been studying social sciences for over 20 years. When I lived in Montreal in my 20s, I'm 48 now. When I lived in Montreal in my 20s, I lived on the plateau near McGill University. I was surrounded by people who were like, literally I would walk down the streets and there'd be boxes of books, like textbooks from university. I would pick up all these textbooks in my 20s. And so I was just learning all these different subjects, um, which was really cool. Um, by the way, when you go to university, that's something that you kind of find out is the a lot of professors just regurgitate what's in the textbook. So people just read the textbook if you don't need a piece of paper. Um, so I, I've just I've been learning social sciences for over 20 years, but I finally started applying it to my life. And when I started doing that, I started seeing some really great results. And then I started teaching other people what I was doing and they started seeing really great results. So then I knew I had a formula. I, when it was time for me to stop stripping and to get in and get into my next career, I was wondering what I needed to do. And the universe was like this, like you need to do this. And there were so many messages coming at me for me to be a dating coach. Like I wanted to be a therapist, but the universe was like, no dating coach. So I did because I listen and, uh, I, I branded, I put together a platform. I wrote some books. I, that's my award for life coaching right there from the region. So voted on by the people. Thank you very much. Um, and here I am today delivering, you know, my information so that I can help as many people as I can. I'll be buying fix that shit now. Thank you, my love. Incredible story to see how far you've come. You're a true inspiration. Thank you, my love. My number one relationship roles. It's not fair to ask for anything you're not willing to do first. I don't I don't ask you to do anything I haven't done myself. I don't ask you to go down a journey I haven't done myself. I don't ask you to come out of anxiety and depression without having done it myself. I don't ask you to get into something better without having learned how to get into something better myself. I don't ask you to have a relationship with zero fighting without having achieved that myself. So I'm not picking up what other people say and regurgitating that for you. I am coming at you from a place of success having overcome everything you come to me to get through yourselves. <clears throat> I'm in an abusive relationship. He lives in my home. I can't get him to leave. What can I do? Call the authorities. Get the authorities involved. How do I react when my boyfriend says I act a certain way because of where I'm coming from? Um, you can get fixed that shit so that you have the dialogue to come back to these kind of comments. You can come get a coaching session to come get your script. Those would be the two options. In order to give you advice, advice, I would need to dive into your situation. So you would need to get a coaching session. Uh, is cheating to run from an abusive relationship wrong? Just get out of the relationship, my love. I'm 48. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cocoon Apothecary Skincare. Uh, I'll be contacting you soon for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Then one with my spouse. Yes, my love. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Let's make things good. Uh, my I do. Those of you, sorry, those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here. Once or twice, you're going to get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell. When you do that, say, I just did. I just did. If uh, you guys want a chance to win a one hour coaching session, uh, go hit up my Instagram page. Do I have a book? I have eight. I have nine. God damn it. I keep forgetting. I have nine. Who wants a book walkthrough? Anybody want me to do a book walkthrough? I finished reading Fix That Shit. It makes so much sense. Amazing book. Thank you. Um, guys, uh, who here? Who here? Who here? Who here? Wants to do something for me? Uh, who wants to? Yes, please do. 
just did, please do book walkthrough. All right, my loves, book walkthrough. Uh, advice for teens and dating. So Dating 101 and No More Assholes. These two books um, uh, is fantastic for teen dating. Okay, my loves, book walkthrough. Book walkthrough. Book walkthrough. Will you ever do a book signing? Yes, when COVID is lifted. Yeah, definitely I'm touring. Definitely, I am touring and doing a book signing. I can't wait. I can't wait. I want to bring Charlie with me too. Who wants me to bring Charlie to book signings? Okay. Uh, Come Back Queen. This is the book that is going to help you get over a breakup and put your heart back together. No More Assholes is going to help you choose your next relationship so that you don't end up in something bad again. No More Breaking Up. Uh, Time to get your generous long-term thinker and stick with them. Uh, after the first kiss is what you read once you find that generous long-term thinker and start your relationship. Um, this is a book that helps you solidify your relationship and transition from courtship to reality phase without going through an insecurity phase because you don't understand the transition. Fix That Shit is a book that's going to help you unpack the emotional baggage that you are carrying right now and vomiting into your relationship. If there's conflict and fighting in your relationship, this is the book that brings it to zero. If you do what's in this book and you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you, Custom Made is going to help you uncover what your purpose and your passion is. If you are putting all that focus on your partner and are being upset because they don't spend every minute of their spare time with you, also, I teach you how to monetize your purpose and passion so that you start getting paid doing what you love. Uh, my education background is sociology, psychology, anthropology, biology, behaviorism, spirituality, uh, and philosophy. Dating 101 is the book that uh, helps you understand the drives, behaviors, and emotions behind love. This is a textbook. This is the book I wrote to get into sex ed class in high schools. Uh, Fake Love Need Not Apply, this one is free in the ebook format if you hit that free book button in the link to my bio. Also, by the way, there is a free long distance guide if you want to download that. Uh, so Fake Love Need Not Apply is how to avoid posers, losers, scammers, and predators. Say Yes to Goodness is a book about life. 10 areas of your life that affect you, how you can navigate that and be a happier person overall. The most inspiring thing I've ever been told. Um, I have to say my mom probably said that. She's always said, you can do anything you want to do. And I I always believe that. Always, always believe that. Um, I don't know if, it's just, if she was just so effective at saying it or if I just fundamentally knew it. But um, I would say you can do anything you want to do. And honestly, I've, I've, I've taken that to the bank. Like... Um, I have decide like what I decide to do I do I become and I do it very well so I would say that do you have tips on how to deal with a guilt after being the one to leave the relationship so guilt is a an emotion that's very strong in women um, because guilt is the emotion that keeps us from just letting a child die so know that uh, guilt is just a biological emotional response. You don't need to let it drive your behaviors. You can simply be in the emotion and go, oh, I have a vajajaj guilt, okay. And then go on with your day. What do you call it when you know you're great and special but don't feel lovable? Uh, I Dysfunctional, dysfunctional. <laughs> I want to read them all. Hey, I love your work. Thank you. Uh, how to get out of the friend zone? The friend zone is not a bad word. So uh, it's not a bad word. Not a bad word. Uh, my husband, you know, certainly was friend zoned and look at us now. But uh, don't use friend zone as a bad word. I want to read them all. I agree. Thank you. Uh, who wants to do, who wants to love me? Who wants to do something loving for me? Who wants to love me? Oh my goodness. We've been sitting here for an hour. Who wants to love me?
Yes, please. <laughs> um, so if you guys want to do something for me, oh, look at this, my knees, my hearts, you guys, you're super sweet. Um, if you've read any of my books, will you right now, like right now, go to Amazon and go leave a review for whatever books you've read? Or if you haven't read any of my books, are you willing to go leave a Google review? Like if you watch my TikToks, you watch my lives and they help you, are you willing to go leave a Google review? Like right now, I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm just going to wait for you guys. Is there anybody who's willing to do that? My love language is words of affirmation. And it literally means everything to me when you guys go leave those reviews. If you don't want to write words, you can just leave stars. If anybody is willing to go do that, say, be right back. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Malia, thank you. Be right back. Thank you, my love. I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm just going to stay right here. I love it. Thank you, loves. What is recommended reading? You have really enlightening content. Um, I, I can do Google stars. Be right back. I love you. Thank you. Uh, recommended reading. So um, you you can actually take a, uh, a what book is right for me quiz in the link tree in my bio. And based on your answers, it'll list my books in the order you want to read them in. And it'll even put like a little percentage bar beside each one to let you know how much you want to read it. Be good. My ex and I ended things on good terms. Uh, we're deciding to get back together. How do I know it will be good and healthy? Get fixed that shit. Do what's in that book to have a healthy relationship. Can you tell an interesting married man to call you back after he gets a divorce? I mean, after he gets a divorce is reasonable. I just left your view on Google. Read, fix that shit. I love you. Thank you. Found a boyfriend kissed his ex a year ago at the beginning when we made it official. Do I ignore it? I would suggest you get a coaching session, love, because that's not enough of a story for me to um, be able to assess if this is a good relationship for you to stay in or not. Oh, somebody just got no more assholes. This is cute. So many. Who saw that video of me? Um, you know, doing the running thing where your face is like imposed on the uh, the Victorian dress body. Somebody said you have officially mastered TikTok with this video. That's <laughs> cute. Na, da, da, da. Jack, you gotta go. Ah. My boyfriend kind of pushed his way back into my life after cheating on me for years. How do, can I let him down easy? Why? Just, just leave the relationship. Breakup sandwich. This is why you're great. This is why you'll be great for someone else. Uh, this is why, or this is why you're great. This is why it's not working. This is why you're great for someone else. Um, but just go. I don't know why, you know, you're so concerned uh, about somebody who cares more about themselves than they care about you. You don't need to.
when you don't need to. Do 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 do. La la la. You're welcome. I can't fix things without her not what? Is it fair for me to tell her that I'm not comfortable with her texting other guys? Um, so I don't know who she's texting. I don't know what you mean by other guys. I don't know if these are like random people that she meets and she's seeking their attention. Or I don't know if you're talking about friends that she has and you're being insecure about her friends. Dan left on Google Books on your dating 101. Thank you, my love. Thank you, my love. Thank you, lovely. Left a review. Thank you, my love. I uh, thank you, thank you, Ralph. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, lovelies. Thank you, my loves. Somebody commented, you don't have to taste shit to know that it tastes bad. Um, I don't know if he's ever tasted poop, but sometimes you just don't actually know how bad poop tastes until you taste poop. So, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So oh, many comments. I love you guys. Love stars. Excited to read your books. Thank you. Uh, just friends that she has, but I'm probably just being insecure. Have you met her friends? Um, how long are you in this relationship for? Can you discuss how to talk about complicated feelings and emotions? Uh, that is too vague of a question. Um, too vague of a question, my love. just put my review to amazon i hope that helps yes it does yes it does absolutely absolutely huh. oh so many comments i can't keep up i can't keep up y'all are so amazing you all are so amazing. All are so amazing. I love you guys. I have Fixasha coming today. Ooh, I'm excited for you. I ordered my copy of The Perfect Play, which is the last book that I read, read, wrote. Uh, it's a book for men for dating. Anybody here read The Perfect Play yet? I heard that uh, the deeper the feelings, the harder it is to discuss. What are your thoughts? Um, I, it really depends, my love. It really depends. It depends on you. It depends on your communication skills. It depends on who you're with. It depends on their receptivity. Um, my boyfriend often criticizes the way I was raised and how I know nothing. Uh, I don't know what to do. Dump the motherfucker. Dump the motherfucker. He's trying to reduce you. He's trying to make you small. He wants to step on you to elevate himself. He sounds toxic. It sounds like you are seeking the familiar, even if it's wrong for you. You left a toxic home environment. You went out and found yourself a toxic boyfriend because that feels familiar to you. Uh, even though it's dysfunctional, there's comfort in familiarity. Stop the cycle. Get out of this relationship. Come get coaching or get no more assholes. But stop being around toxic people just because you are familiar with that environment. How do I deal with wanting more in a relationship but not wanting to leave because you love them? Come get coaching. We we're doing long distance, recently broke up after a year, deciding if it's still worth fixing. Uh, so you vomiting insecurity and controlling tendencies is not going to fix anything. It's not going to make anything better at all.
I want coaching. You are so amazing. Thank you, my love. Uh, I always end up feeling like I love more in the relationship. Is there such thing as equal love? Uh, probably not, right? Because uh, we are individuals. And listen, like sometimes you're going to love your partner more. Sometimes they're going to love you more. Um, but if you always end up feeling like you love more, I would say come get a coaching session so that I can assess what you are doing and who you are choosing. Why do men always come back after leaving? Um, maybe they're lonely, maybe they're horny, maybe they realize how much they love you. Uh, there's a multitude of reasons. I don't know what, what that would be in your particular case. If you wanted me to understand why someone is coming back to you, you can come do a coaching session and I can do an assessment. You're so welcome. Mabansky followed the host. Thank you, my love. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. Is it bad that I only miss people if I know I'll never see that person again? Um, I don't know. I don't know, love. Who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. Uh, who's going to go follow me on Instagram so that they can take part in that free coaching giveaway that I do every month? I do. I see you, my love. Uh, so those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here. Once or twice, you're going to get a pop-up. In the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell when you do that. Say I just did. I caught my husband gawking at another girl right in front of me. What do I do? Stop trying to control eyeballs. It's okay for people to notice other people. Do you have a celebrity crush? I do. Uh, what is this? Conception? Con misconception? Do you have a celebrity crush? Opinion on swingers? I have no opinion on swingers. I don't care what people do as long as they're happy and consenting. Misconception? Do you have a celebrity crush? Who is your celebrity crush? I forgot it was Tuesday. Yes, right? Yes, yes, you have a celebrity crush. So if you saw your celebrity crush, would you look? you would you absolutely would because we notice people right and we notice people who stand out in a crowd we notice people who are extra attractive so it's normal to see and notice other people so don't be so insecure that you're not okay with the fact that your partner will notice other people um don't be so insecure that 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 bothers you because you will also notice other people. If you're just looking, that's not being disrespectful. And maybe you were looking extra long. How long would you look at your celebrity crush? If you, Chan, I'm dating. If you were out on the street, if you're at an airport, if you're at a restaurant and you see your celebrity crush, are you being disrespectful because you look at them as long as you did? No, you're not. It's not disrespectful to look. It's disrespectful to do this. Ooh, look at that. I would so hit that. Damn, look at her go, right? That's disrespectful. She's prettier than you. That's disrespectful. I wish you look like that. That's disrespectful. But looking is not disrespectful. It's embarrassing to have your partner check out other women, especially in front of you and other people. It's not embarrassing to me because I'm not unreasonable. I don't think it's weird to notice other attractive people. I'm not embarrassed by it. I will be looking too, but I'm not so controlling that I need to mind control my partner. I'm not so controlling that I need to control their eyeballs behavior is cheating looking is not cheating again how long would you look at your celebrity crush for 
It would be more than a second. It would be more than five seconds. You would stare if you saw your celebrity crush because these are people who are more attractive than most people. And so you notice that. And Mother Nature designed you to notice that because symmetry is attractiveness. And symmetry means a symmetrical gene code. We are designed to be drawn to a symmetrical gene code because symmetry is strength. If you look at a bridge, the way a bridge is built, that is symmetry and that creates strength. So we notice people who look extra good because our biology says, I want to mate with that person. I want to make a baby with that person because the biological animal in us is designed to look for strength and procreate with strength in order to ensure the strength of the species. Looking is okay. It's normal. Uh, if, there's a, if there's a book I recommend for you to, to be able to deal with these emotions, absolutely. It's Fix That Shit. It teaches you how to deal with your emotions, reduce your insecurity, and, and, and be okay. Like, be okay. Understand yourself. Self-love. Build yourself up. Not vomit into your relationship. What can I do to make my sister leave her toxic relationship? She just keeps going back. There's nothing you can do. If she decides to practice willful ignorance, there's nothing you can do. You can't get her no more assholes and hope that she reads it and applies the knowledge that she learns in that book to realize that she deserves somebody better, but you can't do anything. You can't make other people's decisions for them. All of my friends hate him. Is that a red flag? Absolutely it is. The people who love you don't like the person you're with. Why? Is it because he's not loving you as well as they want you to be loved? Absolutely, it's a red flag. Uh, what platform do you recommend using to listen to your books? So if you want an audiobook, Fix That Shit is now an audiobook. You can only get it through the link tree in my bio. I do um, add a, um, like I have a, a sh um, an information sheet that gives you app suggestions for whatever device you're using to listen to the audiobook. So make sure you follow the instructions um, for listening to my audiobook. What's the first step to take if you're being verbally and emotionally abused? Uh, so the first step you, you do is you set the boundary. You say, I will not be in a relationship with somebody who verbally and emotionally abuses me. If you choose to do this behavior again, I will leave this relationship because I will not be with somebody who does these behaviors. And if they do it again, you leave the relationship. You don't stay with somebody, understanding that they're displaying a pattern. Because once you do that, you are staying for the pattern, which means you eliminate your right to complain about this you are deciding to stay in a relationship with somebody who displays a pattern that is not okay with you, but you are staying. Therefore, you are giving permission for a continuance of the pattern. So you, you don't get to go around saying, I'm being verbally and emotionally abused. No, my love, you've already detected the pattern and you decided to stay. Do you have any opinions on the podcast, Fresh and Fit? No, uh, I don't. Do you? What do you think? Nicole, Nicole is getting herself a one-on-one. -on -one. Have you read The Proper Care and Feeding of Husbands? No, I haven't. Uh, are there any therapists that you really like or would recommend? I don't um, because I stay very much in my lane. All of my focus is on creating my platform, um, my books, doing my lives, making my TikToks. All my focus is on that. I'm not looking at what other people are doing. This person said he has options if we don't want to not be together. Goodbye, motherfucker. I don't want to be with the person who's like, I have options. You're just one of my options. I want to be with the person who goes, you are the most interesting person in the world to me. And I really don't want anybody but you. That's the one I want. If he says he has options, goodbye, motherfucker. Goodbye. I, goodbye. Like, honestly, the person who says I have options, the moment he says that is the moment I write him off the moment I write them off. He's trying to use a scare tactic. Goodbye. You are showing your toxicity when you do that. I have options. Okay, go. Go. I'm not sticking around. 
I'm just, I, I'm not one of them now. Now that you said that, I have options. I'm not one of them. Take me off the options list because I'm not an option. I'm the selection. I love that everybody jumping into the comments. Never give the time of day to someone who doesn't see you as important. Exactly. Exactly. What would you recommend uh, who's been single for a while and wants to get out of the comfort zone again? No more assholes. Knowledge is power. Read this book. Empower yourself and date with empowerment. Uh... I'm the selection, that's right, baby. I am the selection. And if you don't think I'm the selection, I'm not going to think you're the right one for me. I'm not that crazy. I'm not that crazy. Uh, guys, I'm going to head out for the time being. I'm gonna go for now, I'll be back later. Um, I'm just gonna go have some lunch, um, do some work. So uh, if you want to set yourself up for a notification when I go live again, um, here's what you can do right now. Click my picture up here once or twice, you're gonna get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell when you do that, say I just did. For those of you who are setting yourself up for a notification, don't forget to also take a minute to go into your TikTok settings and go into your notifications and turn those on and also go into your phone settings and turn on notifications for TikTok and you'll get push notifications. Good to see you, yes. Advice on dating multiple people at once and choosing one for a relationship. Yes, use no more assholes and, and choose them based on the 12 character traits. Okay, my loves, I enjoy lunch, yes. I do believe in soulmates because I have one now. Just did, thank you, my lovelies. Um, so I will see you in a bit. I will be back. I'll see you soon.